Also, have you ever wondered what a Shakespearean play sounded like? I mean, actually sounded like. Well, we may consider interpretations of his works by Laurence Olivier as the ultimate interpretations of many of his plays in the modern era, at least since they were able to be recorded. Olivier's voice is very fine and well-trained to suit the taste of his contemporary audiences. The same can be said about... Richard Burton, who was another great actor of Shakespearean plays. But again, the acting style was just made to fit a contemporary audience. Anthony Burgess, the great writer of A Clockwork Orange, among other books, wrote extensively about Shakespeare. And through his studies, he was able to conclude the way in which Shakespeare's lines would have been spoken or recited at the time, upon their debut. So we're talking about the late 1500s to the early 1600s. I came across a clip from the awesome Dick Cavett show years ago, and I often revisit it, as I often do Dick Cavett shows. I love to binge on those. And I would love to share it with you. Here it is. And I think some of you may be surprised. And uh, language, it just intrigues me. Um, mm. If I had no, nothing to do, I would study it uh, in all its forms, I guess. I don't know. Well, it's your but medium, isn't it? It's your medium. My, my medium. It's your medium, yes. But, do, uh, well, sorry. Well, yes. we were going to do uh, some actual Shakespeare for us, well, the way uh, that the people sitting yes. there in the pit used to hear it. Yes, indeed. Now, uh, let's take um, uh, Hamlet. I can't remember the whole soliloquy, you know, to be or not to be, but yeah. uh, you can be pretty sure, I kid you not, as they say, that... Uh, what they heard in 1601 A.D. in London was something like this. To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a say of troubles and boy oppose and end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And boy asleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to is a consummation devoutly to be wished. Devoutly? Devoutly to be wished. That sounds like an Irishman from Nebraska. It is. It is. It is. It is that. It is. It really does. Well, it, see, sounds, the, it sounds the, flat at one, and, and yet it sounds Irish. Well, the way they speak in Dublin is the way they spoke mm. uh, when, the, uh, when the English were ruling Dublin in uh, you know, the 1590s. They, they, mm. The language hasn't changed since those days. Uh, when we talk about Irish speech, we don't mean the speech of Irishmen. We mean the speech of Englishmen in that period, which was mm. transplanted to Dublin. So the say and a cup of tea is not Irish, it's uh, pure English. It is. Mm, it's pure Elizabethan English. That's probably insulting to yeah. the English to be told that. Well, it's a, it's a fair signal, you see. When you see the, le when you see the letters E-A in a word, mm -hmm. S-E-A-T-E-A, -E that was a signal to the people of Shakespeare's time that they pushed the tongue down a bit and said, te. Yeah. Uh, you didn't say, see the sea, you said, uh, see the say. You made a distinction between the two words, which we can no longer yeah. make. And a, a golf tea and a cup of tea, you see, were different again, tea and te. Yeah. Very useful. And so things that rhymed in Shakespeare don't rhyme now because certain exactly, words have changed. Exactly. In, in well, there's a, there's a good example in, uh, I'm sorry to be high, bro, in uh, Henry IV where um, uh, Falstaff and the Prince Henry are having a, a bit of an argument. And Prince Henry asks Falstaff for his reasons. What are your reasons? What are your reasons? And the Falstaff said, reasons are as plentiful as blackberries. But of course, what he said was raisins are as plentiful as blackberries. Oh, and you get so, a pun there. So it was a gag then. It's a gag. Now Raisins now are as no plentiful as blackbirds. No joke now. So the actor has to do something funny with his foot or something yeah, exactly. to get a laugh. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. That's, <laughs> way, that's the way it is. <laughs> Isn't that fascinating? So the speech of England during Elizabethan times was transplanted to Dublin. Hmm. Well, that's something to think about. The words of England's national poet were once spoken in a speech that resembles more the Irish accent than the English accent. I wonder what Brexit voters would think about that. Mm -hmm.